As I render out my newest project, which by the way, my laptop failed at in the middle of the night, it occurred to me, I never talked about how to make cones the easy way. I only did that procedural approach. Uh, so let's talk about how to make cones uh, fast, easy, and good enough for any uh, render, I, I don't know. But uh, let's make cones. Yes, I will show you how to make a traffic cone. Well, let's do it. So the first destination is actually Google Images for this. We're gonna be doing this the quick, the dirty, the not correct, but the visually uh, pleasing way. Um, that, that's just gonna be a lot of texture projection. So Google Images, you're gonna look for traffic cone old because that's the one that has dirt on it. And you're gonna notice that all these images have like their insignias on it. It's like, wow, you, you might think that a cone is a highly valuable object with all these fucking, they, they don't want people downloading these images for some reason coveted cone. Uh, so instead, here's the trick. What you're going to do is you're going to go to tools, you're going to go to usage rights, you're going to go to creative commons, um, and here are the decent people that aren't going to put their logo on everything. So uh, just pick a cone you like and any of these really doesn't matter. I think I used this one for the original, so I'm just going to use it again. Uh, different cone, you model it differently, but essence of it's the same. So pick a cone, save it, call it the cone. Um, and this is what we're going to model off of. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to start off Blender because uh, for some reason, I didn't have the foresight to, to begin it myself. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the camera view. This is where we're gonna model from since I wanna look at the image. Go to the camera, go to background images, and I am going to load in that cone image. Boop. <laughs> um, one thing, by the way, you're gonna notice this is stretched. You can either fix that by you know going through these uh, settings. Uh, I recommend just you know matching the resolution. Uh, what is the resolution of our image? Good question. <laughs> Properties, details, 77, 6, 8, 10, 24, easy enough. 7, 6, 8, 10, 24, beautiful. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna model <laughs> the cone to this view, we're gonna project it, we're gonna do some adjustments and it's gonna be a good time. So uh, let's add in a cube, wireframe mode so we can actually see the photo under it and I'm just gonna start reshaping things and then by enabling um, camera to view, which lets me actually move the camera as I view, I'm just going to adjust this so it's roughly um, taking up the same space as the image. The better you do this, the less trouble we have down the road. And believe me, you don't want trouble. Um, so just scale it, make it look like the, the result doesn't need to be perfect. Um, for the cone part of it, uh, just inset like this, and we need to turn it into a circle. Um, and there's a great trick for that. So after you do the inset, oh, God damn it, full screen. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna subdivide a bunch. Uh, the more you subdivide, the higher resolution your circle is gonna be in some sense. Uh, so turn this into a dense grid by subdividing a lot. X, limited dissolve or dissolve faces, I guess either one works, is going to now you know, undo all that progress. You're like, well, why did you do that? It's because the vertices are preserved, which means that now you can use the uh, two sphere command and uh, you see it turns it into a sphere. I'm gonna set it to one and uh, now we got a thing. Extrude it on the Z axis, beautiful. How tall does it need to be? About that tall? About that skinny? Um, and you know, if it doesn't line up, what are you gonna do? Are they gonna arrest you? They might. <laughs> uh, just do your best to uh, model this uh, to the mesh. Uh, and we're gonna be doing the final adjustments in UV. By the way, while I do these final touches, quick story time with your boy. I feel like I'm getting sick, uh, which isn't good because uh, it makes talking really hard. So uh, if I sound more nasally than usual, uh, that's what's going on. So uh, bevels, did you enjoy that story time? <laughs> uh, just bevel the thing until it looks, you know, good. You don't need that much geometry since it's all gonna be texture based anyways. Bevel here, also the uh, transition point between circle and the thing, uh, which is divided into multiple sections for some reason. Uh, also take this and uh, bevel it. Boop, <laughs> looks good. Um, and then finally, you could bevel the top, but I, th I, th I think that's pretty solid. Uh, so there we go, we, we, we got a cone. Uh, let's texture the bad boy. First of all, we need to give this thing a material. Uh, the cone is available on Patreon, because it will be. <laughs> um, and maybe the whole scene I was showing you in the beginning. Uh, make a material. What should the material be? It should be an image texture. Uh, what image texture? It should be the, nope, not that one. It should be the cone. Connect it, by the way, this is a node preview add-on. Don't worry about it, link in the description if you do, if you're worried about it though. Uh, just make a material with the image so that when we go to the UV editing workspace and we try to adjust our UVs, uh, you can see that this is now updating with the image, okay? Otherwise we wouldn't see anything. I'm gonna go to the camera view. 
I want these UVs to not be like a normal unwrap, but instead we are going to do a project from view, which is projecting from the camera view, uh, which means that almost right off the bat we get a good unwrap, but again, we didn't model it perfectly. Like there was some uh, overhang here. Um, so now let's uh, fix the thing. Uh, super easy. All you do is you select the sections that are off and then you move them to where they're supposed to be. You can scale, you can distort, you can do whatever. Um, and with uh, big sections like this, it's probably good to enable proportional editing. So when you move something, it moves everything in the area. So I'm just going to adjust this corner. I'm going to adjust this corner. I'm going to adjust this corner. And we can even do a second round of tweaking. That's right. You heard the man. Um, make sure that, by the way, make sure that none of this cone part of it has any overhang because that will make it very obvious. Uh, like you see here, we have like the asphalt behind it. It's catching some of that in the projection. Uh, if you can, try to avoid that. So I'm just going to bring this down a bit, move it just so it doesn't have that issue. And let's do the same thing on the other side. And that looks pretty solid. Okay. Uh, so here's our initial projection uh, for the cone. By the way, uh, normally this kind of thing messes up from behind it, and you're wondering, well, why does it not really here? Um, it's because because a cone's like radially symmetric. It's actually catching the right stuff. If anything, it's a tiny bit off because it's the the lines dipping instead of staying the same elevation, and that's an artifact of uh, project from you. Uh, but it looks pretty good. Uh, just let's do a couple fixes. So you're seeing there's a bit of ghosting on some of these faces. So you could just select these faces that are troublesome. And by the way, it's easier if you don't see it here. Um, you select some of these faces that are troublesome, and then you move them just a bit, and you see that captures the color. So here's before, after. Uh, you could do this on the other side too, but I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now let's uh, bring it home. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this shade smooth, how smooth, well not everywhere, like that. Um, I'm going to now model in some of the extra details, so you could inset the cone. This is so much better than the uh, procedural approach. I mean, the procedural approach wasn't meant to be like practical, it's just like a thing you could do. Uh, but here's how you'd make a, a real cone for your scene. Uh, for the bottom, I want to make these tiny uh, little legs, so what I'm going to do, uh, K for the knife tool, I'm just going to click. Uh, you want to kind of make a square here. Uh, if you enable C, cool trick, it uh, you know refines it, not refines it, confines, constraints, that's probably why it's C, C for constraint. Um, it constrains you to go exactly 90 degrees. Um, so I'm just making a polygon here, and I'll explain why I'm doing this this in a second. I'm just making it nice and uh, parallel, a square, not a parallelogram. Not that a square isn't a parallelogram. I'm making a uh, polygon here so that I can very quickly and easily make the little feet of the cone. So I'm just subdividing so I don't have to do any work here. Just selecting, uh, well, I guess it wouldn't be every other one in this case because the uh, number isn't correct. So I could just do the corners um, and maybe these. I don't know, I haven't seen a cone in a while. Uh, just make little cone feet, bevel the little cone feet, and know those can rest on the ground. Um, so th th there you go, that's a good looking cone. Uh, just to make sure that it looks good in your uh, render, uh, whether it be EV, cycles, whatever, of course you're gonna want good lighting. Uh, but what's really going to tie it together is, again, putting it in a physically-based scene with a lot of principled uh, materials. Uh, but also, coveted trick from Ian, I think, this one. Uh, you take bump, you connect uh, this to bump. This is going to give us a normal map of the whole image, funnily enough, but specifically of this cone. Uh, you connect this, you look at it, and now the cone has uh, detail. Uh, it's because uh, we can't see any of the lighting. Uh, that's the issue here, so I'm just going to add in some random HDRI. And then film, transparent. Um, so you can see the bump adds a little something extra here um, that you know we didn't have before. I'd recommend uh, taking the distance distance down so not everything turns into normal detail. Um, but you, you can see we have we have a cone. Uh, does this hold up when you're super close? No. I mean it kind of does, but um, if you're far away, this is uh, perfect. Like if you want this to hold up when you're close, you just want to fix some of these. Um, you know, texturing artifacts, <laughs> like uh, the base here. And if you wanted to do that, and I'm not going to go 100% into this, uh, but if you did want to, I'm in the wrong uh, editing workspace. If you did want to uh, fix some of this, like for example, uh, this area, uh, what you can do is just select the troublesome faces and then just uh, realign them a little and capture different parts of the texture, like specifically this stuff over here in the back that's probably picking up some weird texture. You can move that here, although... 
this is the kind of thing where you only want to move a single face. Move that here, sample different part of the texture, etc. Uh, but I think this looks pretty good for a fast, dirty cone. You can duplicate it, rotate it, um, and it will look good in your scene. Okay, cool. Uh, thank, thanks for watching the tutorial. That, that, that's it for this one. And what's this on the... Oh, please, the right. I point to the left. That's what I'm supposed to do. It's on the right. Is it a list of... um? I don't know. <laughs> Medications I can take for my throat right now. Uh, no, it's a list of 750 some patrons that are supporting both this channel and the um, CG Matter channel. I couldn't remember that one. I barely work on that one anymore. Um, they, they, they're they supporting both channels. What do they get in return? They get blend files. Like, for example, obviously they get this cone, any blend file I've uploaded over the last two years. It's a great deal. Uh, they also get access to uh, tutorials early, uh, which this week more so than ever, or this month more so than ever is a big deal because I'm doing that mass walk. I'm walking across Massachusetts. Uh, so I am bulk recording tutorials today, which is why this one feels so chaotic. Uh, so some of these you'll be able to see even a week early. Uh, early access to tutorials. That's a big deal. Um, exclusive tutorials, that one I'm probably not doing that much this month because, again, I'll be walking across Massachusetts. All this exists on Patreon. Link in the description. Node preview in the description. A lot of things in the description. Thanks for watching my tutorial. I hope you learned something. Um, I know this is Ian's technique, but what the fuck am I supposed to do? Does he own projection? I don't know. So I don't know what to do with that information. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I'm out of here. See ya.